estimated total cost of 115.48 million US dollars within the duration of the PPA. The likelihood of the plant being idle. How did it move from four years to five years? I thought it was four. <laughs> well, yeah. but this is right. This yeah, reading from this appendix. Yes. Was, what's the, name of the title of the appendix? Are you sure you have the same book? This yeah. is a yeah. 3B. Oh. No. Table 9.1. Okay. 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 Yeah. It says the likelihood of the plant being idle is further heightened by the fact that it is a pure natural gas fire turbine to be located in Tama where there is inadequate gas to feed it. There is therefore a high probability of the plant remaining idle even if allowed to proceed. The actual development cost of the project to date should be verified and used as a guide in negotiations for termination. Mm. Uh, so this is the recommendation. These are the recommendations. Okay, okay. This is not a recommendation. Okay. But I will this, this is contained in the, in the body of the report, but that is not the recommendation that I will deal with. That. Is it okay. Mr. Baku says that not every judgment that is tainted with, with corruption. fraud yeah, or corruption. Yeah. That is true. And I will not say that this judgment that is tainted with fraud. Mm. But I can tell you that this judgment that is tainted with criminal negligence and criminal recklessness. And that is why I am sad. Sitting here as a gainer, that is why I am heartbroken. Because we've been slapped with this $170 million judgment debt, which is accruing interest on a daily basis, compounded on a monthly basis. Because of the criminal negligence and recklessness of the Kufuado government, they are the ones who have caused this huge financial loss to the state and therefore must be held responsible. So yes, they may not be fraud, but there is criminal negligence and there is criminal recklessness. It is so clear that that is the reason why we are where we are. You see, there has been some attempts by the Attorney General and Mr. Bakun, some way, somehow, has rehashed some of those statements by the Attorney General, that the agreement which was signed, the emergency power agreement which was signed, between ECG and GPGC was defective. The Attorney General says that it was structured in such a way that it imposed unnecessary financial liabilities on government. And he, even, he has even said that the agreement was unnecessary. Randy, that is not true. This agreement was very necessary. The execution of same under the Mahama administration was proper and regular. We were in the midst of a severe Dumso crisis, owing largely to a generational capacity shortfall that needed to be addressed. We had a lot of PPAs and EPAs at the time which had not materialized. And so the government had to deal with that power shortfall. And that is what led to the execution of some of these EPs and PPs. We needed a power, but not we, the Mahama administration was not just interested in achieving an equilibrium between demand and supply, producing power to meet our immediate needs or power demand as a country. But we were forward looking and even looking at the possibility of increasing our exportation of power. To neighboring countries and other countries because since the 70s we've been exporting power to Benin and Togo, Burkina Faso and we had plans of even increasing that. So that is what informed the execution of this GPGC EPA. The agreement was not only ratified by cabinet but agreement was ratified by Parliament on the 23rd of July 2015. It was approved by Parliament. It was approved by Parliament. Mm -hmm. It was signed on 3rd of June and it was approved. And the memorandum to Parliament presented by the Minister, then Honorable Dr. Pamela Donko, is what is before me, mm -hmm. with the agreement attached. Mm -hmm. Parliament 
as a house with the MPP participating both at the committee level and also at the plenary approved the agreement. So this post facto issues of oh, the agreement was defective, the agreement was this, that, that is neither here nor there. Godfrey Dame doesn't know better about power agreements than Matthew Poku Prempe and members of the MPP on the Energy Subcommittee of Parliament who all vetted this agreement and approved it both at the committee level and at the plenary. So, let's stop that. Randy, I can tell you, I've gone through this document, that this GPGC agreement was one of the best, if not the best, mm -hmm. that we executed. Yes. I've heard the, the then Power Minister Kwabla Donko say that the tariff for this agreement... It was the cheapest. Yes. This is it. Yes. It was four cents. Capital recovery of 3.7 cents and fixed ONM charge of 0 0.3. Total capacity charge of 4. Car power was 5.6 cents per kilowatt hour. Same power was 5.04 cents, US cents, per kilowatt hour. This was 4 cents. Again, if you check all the other agreements, the duration was 5 years and above. Car power was 10 years. This one was 4 years. Very short. What, what did the agreement to Parliament say about the duration? It was four years. Four years. I can read that to you. Okay. Then apart from the because duration... who was reading, I thought I heard something like reviewed PPA. Oh, it's here. I will show you. Which, which means that subsequent... Because that report is of dubious validity. And I'll come to that. Okay, let's go on. That report is of dubious validity. Mr. Bob, look, apart from that, under this agreement, this was the only EPA, or one of the few, that government of Ghana was not supposed to provide financial security in the form of guarantee. Okay. So it was very easy for us. And it was very cheap. We executed it. It went for cabinet. It went to cabinet for approval. It went to parliament for approval. Nothing improper was done. You came into office in 2017. And then you decided to terminate the agreements. And the letter of termination, which is dated 13th February, 2018, a copy of which I have here, they didn't make reference to any issue of SS capacity charge as a reason for termination. So this is the letter to the company? To the company. So, so, By so this letter... Which he says he wrote on the orders of cabinet chaired by President Ekufuado. Hmm. So you see why you can't blame just Boachia Jacob. Because you see, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. all the commentary about what is wrong with the agreement mm -hmm. as far as the termination and arbitration is concerned mm -hmm. is inconsequential yes what is important is this letter the grounds for the because termination because this letter gives the grounds for termination exactly and it is on the basis of this letter that a company will go for arbitration exactly and randy in this termination they gave about three reasons for the this letter they gave about three reasons for the termination mm. they said that the company had failed to fulfill certain conditions subsequent. Right. The agreement said within 30 days after the ag agreement becomes effective, mm -hmm. the company is supposed to fulfill certain conditions subsequent. Mm -hmm. Government of Ghana said, look here, you've not fulfilled. So the EPA is null and void. Then some of those conditions were that you were supposed to get a license from the Energy Commission mm -hmm. in accordance with Section 11 of the Energy Commission Act to allow you to engage in the sale of electricity in Ghana. Our check shows that you, have, you don't have that license as at the termination date. You were supposed to get siting and construction permits for your plant. We've checked, you don't have site, even though you've built something, you don't have permits. You were supposed to achieve financial closure by 3rd August 2018. We've checked, you don't have financial closure. You've not achieved that. These were the reasons. So if these were the three reasons mm -hmm. given in the letter, yes. Ha the termination letter. This is what it says. In accord. Do you have the EG's advice? Yes, I will, I will make reference to that. He oh. talks about the fact that the plant was used. No, and Kuku, 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 just, just a minute. Just, right just a minute. Mm -hmm. Let me say mm -hmm. a clarification from Koku. The EG's advice, was it. Did it precede the termination letter? Or was advice after the termination? No, what's the date? What's the date of the termination letter? 13th February 2018. No, the EG letter came late. Okay. The ages letter is uh, August 2018.
So, but, but so that's, I'm going there. Just, just a <laughs> minute. So it suggests that 28th, no, 28th uh, August yes. 2017. Yes. Okay. So it was before. So, so most definitely, the AG's advice was advice to government. Yes. Yes, of course. And that would inf that would form the basis for the termination. Yes. Yes. Okay. But the termination so, letter so, itself so did not even make so reference to some of the. So this is the termination given to the company. Mm -hmm. yes. The AG's advice will not be given to the company. Obviously. The AG's advice no. will be relied on by... Yes. By, yeah. So, as far as the company is concerned, what is indicated in the letter as the basis for termination is really what the issue is. What is that's yeah. what they are challenging. And this is what it says. If you yeah. the defense will then have to... Include reflect. more things. And, and I will come to all that. Yeah. Right, it says the letter says, in accordance with the 